Welcome back to Boston Public Radio. Jim Browdy and Marjorie Egan. We're live at the Boston Public Library, streaming at youtube.com slash gbhnews and facebook.com slash gbhnews. As you know, every Friday we have live music. Well, today is not Friday. A special treat here at the BPL on a Tuesday, live music. We're joined now by Mark and Maggie O'Connor, both Grammy winners, by the way. They'll be performing tomorrow night at City Winery Boston. You can get tickets at citywinery.com slash Boston. I hear it's a great venue. And ordinarily, we'd talk to the players before, but we didn't want to wait. So here they are, Mark and Maggie O'Connor doing Fiddling Around. Doing fiddle around. Join us if you would, you two, that and bring your fiddles with you. That was absolutely that fantastic. Was we were looking at you, listening to you all morning. We're so thrilled to have you with us today. And I was reading that the, the, well, you just brought the actual uh, copy of your book, Mark O'Connor, Crossing Bridges, that you wrote about your kind of autobiography of your life. But I was reading the beginning of it where you talked about back in 73, you were only what? 13 years old, 12 years old? 11. 11, 11. years old, yeah. okay. And you're out in the hallway of an Oregon schoolhouse. And what happened? Well, this fiddling legend was uh, walking my way. I was just a beginner, <clears throat> and had just started the fiddle. <clears throat> and uh, we had heard him um, just a few weeks before at the big national fiddle championships. It was my first time going there. Uh, they hold it in Weezer, Idaho. And uh, I grew up on the north end of Seattle, Washington. And uh, this uh, legendary fiddler 
was originally from Texas, and he moved up to Washington State to retire. And there he was coming my way, and my mother standing right there, and he started talking to my mom. And then uh, what ended up happening is he took me under his wing and uh, not only taught me violin and fiddle lessons, but he taught me all day long and through the weekends. I became his protege, and I learned all this great fiddle music from this legend, Benny Thomason. And by the way, it took you all the way till 13 until you won the Grandmaster Fiddler <laughs> Championship. So obviously, he did a good job. Maggie, how did you two hook up? Oops, I didn't mean that. <laughs> oh. I actually didn't mean that. How did you, uh, meet. How did you two get... Meet. Uh, meet, thank you very much. How did you get together to be doing well, You know, this? I felt like I've known Mark uh, for a very long time because he was my musical hero. And Is so, that true? It, oh, yes, absolutely. He's pretty much the reason I'm still playing because... Uh, I, I did classical violin and fiddling, and he showed me that there's a way, before I met him, just his music showed me that there's a way where you can do both and you can create something new with it that's uh, incredibly inspiring. So, um, yeah, I reached out to him after I graduated from Peabody, uh, where I got my classical uh -huh. violin degrees, all the classical stuff, and I wanted to get better at my fiddling, and so I actually wanted to do a fiddle contest, and I thought, well, maybe he'll give me a lesson. Uh, so I can get ready for a fiddle contest. I even got an official grant. You know, it was small, but it, <laughs> I got a grant from and you got him too. to get a lesson. And I got <laughs> so I met him. And I was yeah, your grant, I guess. I never got to do the fiddle contest, but we got married instead. So. Yeah. Well, congratulations <laughs> yeah. to both of you. That was really spectacular. But I mean, you went from that little Oregon schoolhouse to the championship that Jim talked about, and and you come into contact with all these huge names: Emmy Lou Harris, Dolly Parton, Yo Yo Ma. That we local uh, boy. Local Local boy from Boston, Johnny Cash, James Taylor, another local boy. Yeah. I mean, give us some context of, of what um, you mentioned growing up in Seattle, you talk about it in your book, but but there's 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 the classical violin that you were just talking about, yes. and there's fiddling, and there's kind of where the twain meets. Tell us about that. Well, there was a significant project that I wrote music for with uh, for Yo Yo Ma. And actually James Taylor was on one of those albums, uh, Appalachian Waltz. And, um, and that was the album, I think, that really inspired Maggie, my wife, yeah. um, uh, when she was a lot younger, when that came out in the 90s. And um, it, it was really something um, else. I mean, it was uh, uh, bringing the, the fiddling, American fiddling musical language into a classical music setting where Yo-Yo Ma took his cello and we met, you know, halfway in between and we, we created this new American classical music that... Um, it really became one of the, the biggest projects I've ever, I've ever composed for. You know, Maggie, one of the things, Marjorie and I were talking before you got here and uh, uh, talking about the fiddle, and I think the conventional wisdom that I subscribe to is the fiddle was not sort of a Northeast kind of thing. And then we listed in our minds all of the people who've been on our show, culminating with you two, who played the fiddle, and we realized, obviously, this is a spreading phenomenon. Is that, I mean, you're going to say yes, obviously, but it is, isn't it? It's no longer like a geographically limited kind of deal. Absolutely. And, you know, the history is so incredibly rich, um, the American history of the violin and its journey from, you know, I mean, it's an Italian instrument. And then we have, you know, the Celtic fiddlers that brought over they a were lot here of their, last week, their actually. jigs and yeah. reels and... And then you had the um, African-American enslaved people that also picked up the fiddle and helped create the hoedown and the spirituals and ragtime. And so all these incredible styles that have emerged he right here in America, the melting pot. So why would you never have the fiddle off that you're supposed to have with this guy when you met him? <laughs> what happened? I mean, well, we're still doing it. We just did it, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of doing it, before we talk a little bit about your performance tomorrow, it's tomorrow night, right, at the City Winery? Right, tomorrow night. You're playing again for us. I hate to keep running you back and forth, yeah. but I'm really into the instrument and the sound. What are you playing for us this time, you two? Well, we've got some new music that we're also going to add. Um, our concert is a retrospective of um, the music that I learned uh, when I was a kid growing up, learning from the American music legends in the 70s. But we've got a few new songs that we're just going to be releasing this spring, and we, we'd like to do one of them. I'm going to grab the guitar. Great. My story is also about my guitar playing. Yeah, think? I know. You think he can play the fiddle, and then he plays the guitar. And, it's, <laughs> and the mandolin, and the yes. banjo, and the dobro. <laughs> is dobro, is that, do I pronounce that right? That's it? Yeah. Is that a kind of guitar thing, or what is it? Yeah, resonator guitar. You play with a slide. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are you playing by yourself this time and leaving her ear, or what are you doing? Maggie's going to be featured on this one. She's going to sing a little bit, too. Oh, fabulous. Great. So here they are. 
star, Mark and Maggie O'Connor. Is this Spice of Life you're doing? Yeah, this is a new song that I've written for us for a new, a new project, Spice of Life. Spice of Life. Here they are again, and the Mark book, and Maggie O'Connor. And, and the book that I mentioned before, which is just the, out, by the way. just out. Mark O'Connor, Crossing Bridges, My Journey from Child Prodigy to Fiddler Who Dared the World. And uh, guess who we have? Some very impressive people have who blurred this be? book in the back. John Williams, called the famed conductor of the Boston Pops for years and years and years, a musical as well as an orthopedic orthopedic miracle. I don't know why he said orthopedic miracle. Winton Marsalis, a national treasure, yep. they say. Yo-Yo Ma. How about James Taylor? James Taylor. Read James Taylor's quote, quote on the back of the book. There's something about that guy's touch. I think he is to music what Muhammad Ali Jesus. is to boxing. So go ahead, Muhammad Ali. Give us a little twirl here. Spice of life. Spice of life. Great. It's a walk in the woods with old mother nature The sound of the breeze blowing through the tall trees The creek down below singing songs I remember From childhood dates with my mama and me It's the gait of my horse as I sway in the saddle The power that I feel when I give him the reins The pounding of the hooves as he's climbing the hillside Full speed ahead and he never complains a movie that makes me cry like a baby the ache in my throat if i hold it inside the effort that it takes to fight my emotions relief that i feel when i break down and cry it's the spice of life that makes it worth living every mile i drive down the white road is the sound of black towel bumps and vibrations the music i hear on my radio The twist of the pegs, turning them to perfection. The push of the bow in a gentle straight line. The student is discovering, he's hearing that rhythm. How it all feels when he gets it right. It's the trophies that he won for being a winner. His medals and his photos hanging high on the wall. He cannot remember the dates or how many. Just something he did, it was nothing at all. It's the spice. And makes it worth living every mile I drive down the wide open road Is the sound of a black towel Bumps and vibrations The music I hear On my radio With the spice of life And makes it worth living every mile I drive down life's open road Is the sound of a black towel Bumps and vibrations The music I hear On my radio Come on back one more time. Come back one more time. I want to say again, you're before me tomorrow night at the City Winery, and you can get tickets at citywinery.com slash Boston. You know, Maggie, uh, Mark told us, you know, he he grew up in Seattle, and we heard about the hallway in the school, and we also read, well, you had kind of a tough childhood, a little bullying going on. You had to wait a long time for your parents to get you um, an instrument. You started the violin at seven, but how did you get, I mean, obviously you can sing as well. So how did this happen for you? Mom and dad help you out? Are they yeah. musicians or what? Well, I was basically immediately in a family band. So <laughs> yeah? I, yes. Um, so that was not a choice, but I got to choose what instrument I would play. So uh, Why'd you pick that instrument? 
So we had... Because um, you wanted to challenge Mark? Is that what it was? <laughs> I don't well, know who know, this guy is yet, but I know I want to challenge him. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is there is a connection to Mark because... Um, so my dad was in a band in Florida. We moved to Georgia, and he ha- didn't have his band anymore. So there was a fiddle player in the band, mm. a really great family friend. And I wanted to be like her. And it's funny because we're, we're still great friends, and she told me she was trying to be like Mark. So there you when go. you said family band, though, what do you mean? Your mother and father and your siblings were in a band together. So it was my dad and my brother and me. Oh wow! Yeah, and my mom was like, she put helped drive us all to lessons and, and all that. And you also talk about the O'Connor method of violin uh, teaching. Yes. What's that? I've heard of the what's the Suzuki method or something like that. What's That's the right. O'Connor method? Well, this is uh, this is to uh, kind of. Uh, <laughs> maybe replace the Suzuki method using American music. Um, There was something that I thought was really missing in violin education, especially young kids playing, and it was the creativity part of it that was completely missing, and I talk a lot about that in my memoir, about the seeds of creativity were planted in my little young life. I mean, even though I was growing up in a dysfunctional family, alcoholic father, my mother dying of cancer, um, it was the music that really saved me, that actually uh, provided a pathway, an escape out of my, you know, rough childhood, being bullied at school, for instance. Um, So years later, um, I decided to author a method so kids can learn how to play the violin, but using American music, the rich cultural diversity and racial diversity of our music, including African-American music, which is so important and, and should be taught in schools, um, if, where there, wherever violin is being taught, I feel. Um, the music from the different eras, you know, 400 years of American string playing and f- through fiddling and violin playing. I call it the American violin. Well, you know, having had a few people around my house trying to learn the violin can be very painful to listen to somebody learning the <laughs> violin. It's not like the piano where you could sit down, you play a note, the note, unless the piano's out of tune, or even the guitar would maybe be a little bit easier. But the violin, you got to make the sound yourself. Well, you know what's been great too? We put on string camps with his method and the repertoire is so beautiful that so many parents will come up to me and say, I actually enjoy listening That's good. to my, my child <laughs> practice. I love the songs. I don't get sick of them. By the yeah. way, the memoir that Mark is talking about is called Crossing Bridges, My Journey from Child Prodigy to Fiddler Who Dared the World. So you've played like every kind of venue. How many libraries have you played before, Mark? This is amazing. Is we this were, an is amazing this place? Yeah. We love this. Um, I actually talk about, in the book early on, one of my first little tours in Seattle was uh, the public libraries. Is that so? Yeah, an auto harp player and me when I was 11 years old, my first gig. So this was like returning, like back to the old days. Well, you're going to play one more selection. Before you do, Maggie, what what are you doing tomorrow night at City Winery? If people come to see you, what do they get? We're going to get a little bit of everything. I mean, there's so many styles you can play on this instrument. So I think there's even some Cajun fiddling. Bluegrass. Um, And believe it or not, I'm going to play the spoons. You (laughs) are? Spoons? Oh mm-hmm. my goodness, this is a multi-talented woman here playing the right. spoons. You know, you know, one last thing before you guys go play. Any any good stories about any of the that you can share with us from your book? Any good anecdotes about any of the people that people know? You know, Yo Yo Ma locally, oh James gosh. Taylor locally, Conrad Twitty, I think I saw his picture in there too. Have your pictures, Johnny Cash. I mean you've got you've got all the famous people there. Well, folks should know that uh, my last teacher uh, when I was 17, 18 years old was the great jazz violinist Stefan Grappelli. And he took me under his wing and mentored me, taught me, and I toured with him. Is he French? And, and he... he's from Paris, France. No, okay. But he played American jazz on his violin. And um, so I auditioned for his group on guitar, made it in, and he discovered that I also played violin at the first rehearsal. And then we started playing two violins together. So playing with Maggie today just brings me back to those great memories of playing with Stefan all the way to Carnegie Hall. So my story oh goes Oh my from, gosh. From uh, the Grand Ole Opry debut when I was 12 years old, Roy Cuff putting me on stage, to uh, Merle Haggard introducing me for a command performance in front of uh, President Ronald Reagan in the, in the 80s, and then Carnegie Hall, uh, Stephanie Grappelli playing twin violins. With Next him. interview you do, people are going to say, what are Jim and Marjorie really like? I mean, what are <laughs> Maybe not. Okay. okay, what are you playing for your final piece? You've been very generous with us today. What's the final piece? Well, thank you. Uh, we just, so to kick off this memoir, we, we went back to the Grand Ole Opry and reprised the very first tune I played on the Grand Ole Opry called Faded Love, a song by Bob Wills. 
And so, and I was 12 years old and played that, so we're going to do oh our God. duet rendition of Faded Love. Fabulous. Mark and Maggie O'Connor, tomorrow night at the City Winery, citywinery.com slash Boston to get tickets. Faded Love is what you're going to hear from this twosome right about now. Thank you so Thank much you so for much. being here. That was Mark and Maggie O'Connor. They're going to be Great. performing tomorrow night at City Winery Boston. You can get tickets at citywinery.com slash Boston. Thank you very much Thanks. for coming in. That a was lot. a real Great. wonderful tweet. 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 Treat. Marriage is what brings Wings us off together. together. Thank you. Coming, <laughs> coming up next, CNN's John King, Back to the Real World, discusses the latest political headlines out of D.C. You're listening to Boston Public Radio 89.7 WGBH. We're joined now on Zoom by CNN's John King, their chief national correspondent, host of Inside Politics, which you can catch weekdays at noon. Hello, John King. And a man after that last segment with zero musical ability. <laughs> Make that two of us, my friend. Yeah, I, I mean, they were just amazing. We were so thrilled to have a chance great. to have uh, Mark and Maggie O'Connor with us. But getting back to the depressing events that are happening <laughs> in, in D.C. Um, well, this wasn't in D.C. I guess this was in New York City. That's where Fox News is based. 